What's up guys? Alright, I've been meaning to do this video for a minute. I just haven't had like a like a good morning like I have right now to do it. So I'm gonna do it. This is a walk around video of my new trailer that I built. If you're watching this video because you watched my last one and you know the, the walk around I did a few months ago of my trailer that I built to uh, haul my dirt bikes on. And I used, just don't dirt bike that much, as much as I do camp. And that trailer was just kind of heavy and awkward to just pull around just to camp if you weren't uh, you know, riding bikes. It was great for riding bikes and camping, but I just don't ride bikes and stay the night that often. Uh, usually when I ride, it's during the day and I come home because I'm beat and I'm tired and I'm wore out. And I just want to come home, take a hot shower and get in my bed. But I've been riding a lot less. I use, uh, just a jack I got from Big R, uh, just like a tractor supply type store. It has a little sleeve you weld on, and then you just pull this pin, and you can remove the jack totally, and you just have this little, this little weld on sleeve, um, or you can pin it down, pin it back, whatever you want. I like it because if you had to remove it, you could. That's why I like about that one. It's the same style I have on my other trailer. It's rated more pounds than what my trailer is, so it's super beefy. Um, I can take it on and off, blah, blah, blah. This, I'm not going to go over as much because I'm playing with ideas still, but I had one of my pit bikes strapped on that mount, so I'm going to perfect that and do a video on that later. Next thing we're going to do is move to the storage. Um, I, had, I bought these pack out boxes probably two and a half years ago, three years ago, or more maybe even, when pack outs first came out. Um, I'm a contractor. I was doing a lot of painting and drywall and I bought these boxes to uh, put our paint supplies and our drywall supplies in. There we go. Go ahead and swing this out to get the full effect here. So I'm a tire gate tape. I usually keep my food on this side, um, but right for right now, whatever reason, I was out camping, I got the boxes mixed up, just picking them up, coming home. Um, this one I just use for tools. Uh, I have a saw, a couple hatchets, I've got my citronella candles, uh, I've got some wipes, I've got sockets, ratchets, pliers, uh, my camp lights, and my USB camp lights, uh, some of these bungees, trailer lock, like my trailer hitch lock, just random stuff like that in there. And then this one right here usually stays on this side also, but it has similar stuff like tools tie downs has a tire pressure gauge in it um i have tons of storage if i want to take anything else that's usually all i all i usually use and on this box over here which like i said is usually on this side that's my food storage and i've got plenty of room for food storage and i have another box identical to this that keeps all my spices and it goes here and it's also for food that way um you know i have my propane tank right here this is basically the front of it is my kitchen um, I utilize the Jeep and the trailer basically the same time and this is my little kitchen setup if it's raining I can throw a tarp over from one to other and that's that if I'm unhooked from the trailer what I usually do is just pull right up over here in the same same area as where the front of the trailer wherever the front of the wherever I have the trailer parked at I'll just back the Jeep over by to this area and just open it up like this I did a video on this uh, table a while back. This is a trail recon table. It's the front runner. Darn good table. I've used the heck out of it. Um, I don't plan on ta ever taking it off. I'll have all the stuff from the last time I went out. I ain't even touched this Jeep since the last time I went out. Um, this right here is the annex. I put it in uh, one of my sleeping bag bags, but it's the annex to this tent. And the tent folds out, tent folds out to the passenger side that way. So we can put the annex on that side and have an extra room to put in their bed or so, or to put stuff and you know just to, or just have an extra room to put things. I don't always carry the annex with me. I just took it out to test it. Uh, did pretty good. A lot of this stuff right here stays in my Jeep because I don't always have hooked to the trailer. Um, but I really, really like not having a tent on my Jeep. I don't have to have. An extra battery on my Jeep. I don't have to carry all that crap on my Jeep. Um, I do have my boxes still, and honestly, I'm probably going to take that rack off um, unless I'm just solo camping. If I'm just solo camping out of my Jeep, those racks 
are very those racks and the racking boxes are are great to keep stuff in and keep it out of your jeep but now that i have this trailer all my stuff's in here and i literally have nothing in these boxes so that can i can take that off save some weight uh pick up some uh pick up some gas mileage back and not have to carry that rack and stuff around since i built this trailer uh, if i'm going out solo without the trailer by myself like in the hammock or something the rack's great um, the rack's probably going to get taken off in the summer um, it's getting hot i'm probably going to do a lot of solos like the high i want to do some of the high altitude passes and i don't want to take my trailer so i'm probably going to leave the rack and such on there um, and just sleep out of the hammock all right so that's basically all my storage and my kitchen deal um i guess to go along with the kitchen would be my grill so i'm gonna pull these boxes off and set them down and we're gonna get in the front of this thing and get the uh get the rest of my kitchen set up out i would just been camping in this thing and it's i parked it and didn't touch it again so things aren't exactly where they're at usually um you see here this one It has all my wiring and cables in it. It has, this is just like a cigarette lighter extension. Um, these are my solar panel extension wires. I got the panel hooked up, got it going. It's putting in like, it's putting in work, I'm telling you. Look at this, 14 volts. It's only putting in five amp right now, but I think I've seen this thing max to the battery's probably full so it's regulating it. I think I've seen this thing like 10.2 amps putting out but so next thing we're gonna go over is the lights I uh, had some camera issues earlier something happened uh, I recorded this whole video and it the camera shut off like halfway through me talking I didn't know it so I'm gonna do it again for y'all so as you can see I got the whole front of this thing taken out here and what I had in there was all right so I pulled out my two dry bags this one is a uh, unplug from Amazon outdoor adventure 110 liter uh, bag you can view Google unplug 110 liter uh, dry bag this is gonna come up with an orange one also and then I also got this 30 liter uh, little waterproof bag this one's legit um, this one's all right too it's got the fold down top like a lot of your uh, tent sleeping bag and tent uh, sleeping mats have this one I have all my this one I have two sea to summit uh, like their biggest tarp I also have like a 15 by 18 Amazon tarp in here and then I also have a big army tarp um, for rain and snow and whatnot shade that's all my i have tons of carabiners guy lines stakes etc all my all my stuff that i need to tarp city in this bag right here this bag i'm gonna go ahead and get in it and open it up going along with the kitchen part of this trailer i'm not gonna get it all out but you see my other videos you know i have this little backpack right here this has been with me forever it has all my spoons knives um, I have cast iron stuff my cast iron skillet in there and all the stuff to clean it with um, my big spoons for cooking my cleaning stuff stuff like that all in there some spices and whatnot and then also in here can't really see it but I have my jet bull Genesis in there these waterproof bags also do a real good job keeping dust out you can see this thing's you can see this thing's dirty and dusty and that's because it is dirty and dusty here in Colorado so these are also double as being keeping a lot of snow and rain out in the wintertime also and this bag right here it stays up under this hole right here in the front behind that piece of diamond plate and under this side I keep both my my solar panels this is the 100 watt Thunderbolt from Harbor Freight. Um, I like to keep this one hooked to my EcoFlows. And I have the, uh, I have adapter to adapt it all to XT60. And then the knockoff Jackery panel, I use this one to, you know, keep my battery charged up. So going over the battery, this battery is nothing, this battery isn't anything um, 
exciting. It has a rear energy sticker on it. I just put that on there to be bougie, but it's actually a 31M series or class AGM RV Marine Deep Cycle Battery. I got it from AutoZone here in town with a five-year warranty. The reason I did that is if I was ever anywhere in the States and this thing takes a poop on me, I can go to any auto zone and warranty it, hopefully, within you know 30, 40 minutes, be swapped out, be back in action, if anything ever happened. I do have a new battery that we're gonna be throwing on there in the next video and some upgrades to this trailer, but for right now, I've had this one on the old trailer and this trailer, and I have no issues with it. I've, you know, go to camp, leave the panel hooked to it all day, run from it all day, works great. Moving back to the switch box, this is an Apache box, which is like a knockoff um, Pelican box from Harbor Freight. This first switch is just basically some interior lights. Um, I got one rock light there, one rock light there, not too much. This one is basically just to see in the fridge. You dark, you need to get stuff out of the trailer, you need to get in the fridge, pop this first switch on, got some light. Second one is the rock lights underneath. That not just not, it's not for rock crawling so i'm not rock crawling in this trailer i just call them rock lights because that's what i used it's just to give a little ambient light under the trailer on the ground it's cool because it shines out here a little bit but it's really not that bright to the eyes it's a great little accent light to see where you're going to light up camp but not have an overpowered amount of light if you put both these on the trailer just kind of glows um throws off a little bit of light not too excessive I also have these Nylite uh, pods, four of them on all four corners, and I have those on a remote. The remote's awesome, man. Uh, I got this on Amazon or eBay. Um, there's a bunch of different brands of them. You can look on there for a 12 volt remote relay. It also comes with a little switch back here I put got one right here one right there this is for my other relay i don't have it hooked up yet because i have another remote too with another relay i'm going to hook it to something else not sure what next wait I'm not sure what that's going to be but this little one back here also turns the lights on and off that way if you don't have the remote or if you're over here and the remote's in the jeep and you just want to turn the light on for a second hit that see what you're doing have a flat tire on the side of the road whatever if you're in your camp if you're in your tent and you want to light up the ground outside to see to go pee keep this in a tent you can hook it onto the zipper of the tent go grab the zipper flip your light on go do your business you're done as far as electrical um, battery switch box you know wiring lights I have a Renogy Voyager solar charge controller um, it's a 20 amp so this 200 watt panel puts out like 10 amps so I still got some room to grow on that and I have also, going along with the kitchen storage electrical part of this thing, I have a, I think this is a JP40 or 44 from Iceco, a special edition one with the, with the blue paint and whatnot. Um, good little cooler, take it everywhere. It's, if it's not on here, it's in the back of my Jeep getting used. So that's basically all of the, you know, the electrical and solar and battery on this thing. It's super simple, there's nothing, I don't have an inverter yet. Um, I do, but we're going to get to that in another video. Um, let's go over the, the construction of it. This is 2 by 3 tubing. I cut them 45s and welded. I welded them to the very tops of the angle on the trailer. At first, it was really flimsy. This angle wanted to move a whole lot. With the rack bolted to it, even with the rack bolted to it, it was super, super flimsy. Next up is this rack. This rack came local from Rack Stars, which is a little store or you know, an overlanding store here in town. Um, looking back, I would have not paid the outrageously price I paid for this one, and I got an Amazon one. The way it, the construction, the way it puts together is not good. I don't like the construction of it, but it is what it is. I have it, and we're going to use it. And this is the Gen 1 OG Smitty Built tent. This is not the XL, this is the OG Overlander tent. It has been used and abused, um, and I love it. I love it. It's cheap. Got on Marketplace for 400 bucks. I've got the annex that goes with it. It doesn't leak. 
super comfortable. I've added the Tapui uh, insulated liner that fits right in it. I've also got a, also have a memory foam mattress under the stock mattress. Uh, you don't you can I can I'm a side sleeper and my my hips and my elbows do not dig in and I don't feel any hard surface so that's a plus. Almost forgot about these tubes. Um, they're just four inch ABS from Home Depot with some four inch cap on the end and a four inch uh, clean out on this end. Uh, really the only thing I keep in here is some canopy poles, uh, the little rods for my tent windows and on that side I keep a bunch of tubes and stuff in for the for the diesel heater. So the Rotopack, that's just an experimental mount. If I was going to take a uh, generator with me I would have some fuel for it and I also have my tire table. I'm going to put that on in just a second and show you all where that goes and how that works. And there is my there's my tire table um, I have two little fold-out camp chairs that go on each side they're perfect height you have you know a little area here set your cell phone your cameras that's what I do is I put my camera batteries here cell phone charge everything up and I'll put my awning on this side somehow with some razors and have it you know have it where it's right here normally per se and then uh, whenever you pull the pins, it's going to raise up and uh, come out. That's another. That's going to be another deal. We'll do that some other time. Right now, I'm pretty good with this setup. All right. Last but not least, let's go over the suspension. So, I knew I wanted this thing to be lifted. And I knew I wanted this thing to ride really, really good. So, what I did was I took the front lower or rear lower. I forgot which control arms for my Wrangler. I took the rear coil springs for my Wrangler and the rear track bar for my Wrangler. I made my own mounts and I put all that stuff in here. I then came in and made a third link to keep the axle from wrapping and that is one inch DOM tubing with some himes on the each end. It has a left hand right hand that way you could twist it and kind of not set pinion angle but you could you know you could rotate the axle to get it flat where the coil springs are flat. That's basically what that's there for. Up front here, I had a lot, I had a lot of issues with this front being flimsy. So what I did was I took some DOM and I put some tube here off this piece of angle on the back side of where my mounts were. And then I took DOM and welded to the bottom of that and to the brackets that I had and to this and to that. It goes to the tongue and to the other side where those brackets are welded on too. And basically what that did was that gave me like a uh, a cross member per se that way both mounts are together welded to the trailer in multiple places and they're all connected that way you know I have I have a lot of rigidity there uh, gives me a lot of stableness since I did that the front of the trailer the wobbly like the twistiness went away it when I put that DOM in there and and welded it to the tongue and both sides it took care of a lot of the twistiness on the front of this trailer. I didn't even think it would and it did. I wasn't even trying to do it, but it happened. So, hey, I'll take it. Once I got the cool springs and stuff on there, you can go watch my video if you want to see uh, the process of how I did it. But once I got the cool springs on here, this thing was really, really bouncy. It just bouncy. It's like a trampoline just or an old spring mattress. Just bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Of course it would with no, no way to absorb the bounce with a shock absorber. So, I took my stock. Rubicon shocks. I stuck them up in there and they just did not didn't look okay to me. It looked funky. It looked like some I just couldn't take it. So I was like, man, I want some nicer shocks on this thing. I don't want to buy new. So I got on marketplace, started looking at used. This guy put these Falcon F-150 tow haul shocks up for 200 bucks. I was like, hey, I'll take them. I got them. They're super nice. They have adjustment for tow haul, so it has three different settings. And the first one's really smooth. Like when you're off road and you don't want it to be as stiff, you can hit that number one setting and it really frees those shocks up. If you got her loaded down, put her on two or even three, 
and this thing really stiffens up. This thing, those shocks are made to be on the back of an F-150 towing and hauling stuff, so overkill for this trailer, but they work out great on it. Man, they work, work fantastic on it. Those by just welding the grade eight bolt on the back side of this hoop. I welded the hoop straight to this angle, and when I did that, I had so much issue with those shocks flexing this angle. So I was like, all right, so I'll brace it here, brace it there, because I really didn't want to put anything going across inside here to you know, break up the space or me able to put something in there. But at the end of the day, I didn't really see any easier, cheaper way than just to attach both those to them. So I had some old rock sliders from Goliath off road that I broke first time I took them out. Don't buy those, don't recommend them. I cut those up, took some tubing off of them and connected each shock hoop together and oh boy did that finish off the rigidness of this trailer this thing is so rigid now like it used to i would get inside of it and walk around and it would just you know flex side to side it doesn't anymore this this angle right here doesn't flex anymore when you shake it like it's it's intact it is side to side here is it's super stable i've had a lot of people uh flame me on the internet saying it's just a flimsy crappy uh lawnmower trailer it was it's just a little bit better now it's not you know an off-road trailer you buy from a company but hey man this thing works and it's the first one i ever did so i enjoy building this thing so i'm probably gonna build a couple more let's go ahead and look at the back side here you can see how i made the track bar uh bracket actually that's a tj track bar bracket it's adjustable and then the upper one i made myself and just gusted it all welded it up and nothing's moved on the back back here i've got some uh 24 inch scissor rv scissor jacks and that's basically to keep this trailer from flipping backwards it, it'll flip backwards if you pick that tongue up it'll flip backwards and i didn't want to be roll over here one night and flip this trailer backwards and you know potentially roll me off the mountain or something so i got i ordered some uh, wheel chocks that i can chalk the wheels with both sides to keep it from rolling and to keep it from twisting like this because it's a pretty light trailer it moves when you get up in it and stuff and with the jacks down and this jack down it's super stable um I, like i said i got a video where i slept in it first night and it was amazing i uh, couldn't ask for nothing better so that's basically my setup on this thing um that's that's how i that's how i camp y'all you know that's how i that's how i get down um i do have a shovel and an axe over here stuffed in here beside the cooler um, I'm not into the accessorizing to the max and just putting this and this and this on there. Uh, I only put on there what I need. I don't really need the max tracks. I have a winch, but a good dual purpose use of these, which basically keeps, you know, from hands from getting in here and pulling something. Keeps a hand from going in here and pulling a larger item out. And it also doubles as if I ever need this for something. If I'm somewhere and there's no trees and it's snowy and I can, I can use these beside my winch or use them to help somebody else hey they're here for it i can also use it to level my jeep there's a lot of uses for these things but what i'm my main use for them right now is to keep people's hands from taking stuff out of my trailer so i have a new hitch coming for this thing it's the max coupler um they emailed me the other day that i guess i didn't pay shipping and i clicked the box that says pick up local so i need to check my email and pay that that way i can get that thing in here and i also have an up we're gonna upgrade the battery on this thing with grant there's nothing wrong with this one i've been using this one like this for a long time and i love it but we're going to upgrade the battery on this thing with a lithium and a big boy inverter that way we could run something big if we wanted to like a tv or go out and glamp a little bit this throttle pack right here i use for water wash my hands like you've seen in my last camping video um i might upgrade that to a two gallon lighter may may not and uh, most of the time in the winter my diesel tank's gonna hang there because this right here is where my diesel heater hangs. But for right now, this is this is the setup. Um, these wheels and tires were in my yard whenever I bought my house. Like they look like some uh, black steel soft eights with some 235, 75, 15 uh, BF Goodrich KO2 all terrains on it. Um, they're five on four and a half bolt pattern, just like a Jeep XJ or TJ or Mustang or Ranger or blah, 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 all those. Um, so wheels are out there for it. It's not hard to find them. I got some inch and a half spacers on there now to space them out from the cool springs. 
but I have some two inch spacers in the garage we're gonna throw in there some other day and maybe change the wheels and tires up a little later. I did get this diamond plate from Home Depot and painted it up um, just to keep rocks, dust, water from just going in and just smashing my stuff. Um, but these boxes up here, it definitely helps also. Like I said in that blue bag, that blue dry bag I have, I have an army green tarp. And uh, if it's ever nasty in a place, I have that tarp and I can literally wrap the whole front of this trailer and bring it around and just give me a little, a little bit of guard from all the stuff that's coming through off the Jeep. It is too bad, but everything I have is mostly sealed in cases or bags. So I feel like I'll be all right as far as that. I might have lied when I said it wasn't hot in Colorado because it's getting warm today. All right. Uh, Y'all ignore my hair. I got to have a haircut. My hair is wild. This stuff's going everywhere. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, if there's something on here that you want or are interested in buying or something, uh, comment for the link. I'll send. I'll, I'll post a link for it. I'll find it. Um, I just don't know what links to go post. I got you know I could go post every link of everything I bought, but I don't know what everyone wants. So if you want a certain or can't find something that I've bought on here and want a link to it, um, comment. I'll, I'll go through all my stuff and find a link for you. So right now I'm going to. Uh, pack this thing back up and put it all back together like it was with everything in there full weight and I'm gonna take it off the Jeep and I'm gonna push it around and hook it back up to just show you guys how light it is But I could do it one handed holding the camera even. I might drop this thing, huh? Alright. Yeah. Here we go. Look. One hand. So I'm not the strongest guy in the world. I'm not gonna say every man or woman's gonna be able to go up and do that, but that gives you an idea of how well balanced it is, how little tongue weight it has, and um, how light maneuverable it is. Uh, it's not, not heavy at all. And right here, I still have this straight shot right here that I wanted to open to put my clam tent in. So if I slid my clam tent in, I could get one more cooler in it, and I would have two, four, six, seven people I could sleep easy. There's really no pressure taking it on, you know, taking stuff out of it and putting it back because there's really not a lot here. All right, y'all. Don't mind my hair. It's a mess today. I'm working on getting it cut. That's my off-road trailer. I hope y'all like it. If you have any comments or questions, you know, hit me up down below. You know I'm always there to answer. Um, gonna be doing another video on it here pretty soon on some upgrades. And that's basically just gonna be a couple more lights and a battery and a dang that sun came out yeah a couple more lights a battery and a uh, 3500 watt inverter so stick around for that if you're interested in seeing it um definitely gonna be some more uh videos camping with this thing as always i appreciate y'all for watching uh, if you got any comments hit me up like it if you liked it if you want to see more of this crap give me a subscribe if not that's cool too i appreciate y'all for watching i'll see you on the next one in and out recessions the same way that